Growing up in a middle-class neighborhood in Long Island, New York, Ray Dalio started playing the stock markets at age 12. During this period, he caddied for golfers and got tips from them. It was no surprise he decided to launch Bridgewater from his two-bedroom apartment in New York City, a company that currently manages $154 billion in assets. And to imagine, he started this monumentous company after graduated from the Harvard Business School in 1975 with an MBA at a very young age. Starting a business is not an easy task. The passion that gets you started is not the same passion that gets you through when times get tough. Many people have started businesses that collapsed at their peak, and others have done very well in starting and growing their small businesses into multi-million dollar companies. One such person is Ray Dalio, the world's greatest hedge fund manager. Who is he? And how did he become the world's greatest hedge fund manager managing over $150 billion? Over 47 years, he's grown Bridgewater from a company in his apartment into a multi-billion dollar company that manages over $150 billion of assets as of this video. According to Forbes, Ray Dalio is the 71st billionaire in the world, with an estimated net worth of about $19.1 billion as of September 4th, 2022. This video looks at the life of the investment legend Ray Dalio, his achievements, investment innovations that have changed investing for us, and his legacy for the world. In the early hours of August 8th, Ray was born in Jackson Heights in the boroughs of Queens in New York, where his parents resided. His parents were Marino Dalio and Ann Dalio. Ray was the only child of his parents. His mother, Anne, was a homemaker and his father, Marino, was a jazz musician who played clarinet and saxophone in nightclubs across New York. At age 8, his family moved from Jackson Heights and settled on Long Island to the suburban community of Manhasset in the Nassau County of New York. Just like many kids in those times, Ray did several jobs, including mowing lawns and paper routes and shoveling snow in the winter season. He also enjoyed playing sports with his friends and didn't like the school routine, specifically rote memorization. In a 2012 interview with the Academy of Achievement, he said, I hated school because it was an instruction following thing. I bet you probably it wasn't because I wasn't good at it. Maybe it was because I wanted to pursue the understanding. I think I was just built that way, right? When he was 12, he began working as a caddy in the Lynx Golf Club, an exclusive golf course just a few blocks from his childhood home. Some renowned people who played in the course included the Duke of Windsor, former King Edward VIII of England, former Vice President Richard Nixon, Donald Scott of Wagner, Stott and Company, George Lieb, a titan of Wall Street, and his wife Isabel. Around this time, the talks of the Lynx Golf Club was centered on the growing stock market, where Ray Dalio picked interest in trading. He, therefore, started saving his earnings from the caddy, and once he got $300, he bought shares in Northeast Airlines. At the time, it was the only big company that could buy stocks for that amount. Soon after, Northeast Airlines announced a merger, and Ray quickly earned three times his investment. This experience changed everything for Ray, and he became hooked on the stock investment industry. He started reading annual reports and practically anything he could lay his hands on about trading and investment. He also talked with some older investors and asked them for tips and advice. As a young investor, Dalio used the trial and error method until he found his way around it. According to him, those early experiences significantly helped him build his investment philosophy. Any opportunity he got, he asked some of the smartest investors at the time to critique his reasoning and theories. He discovered that even some investors who performed thorough research into stocks before investing in an idea sometimes made bad investments. By the time he was graduating high school, Ray had assembled a stock portfolio worth several thousand dollars. In the late 1960s, that was a huge amount for a teenager like Ray. Ray was not an exceptional academic, and as such, he didn't perform well in his high school diploma. This became an issue for the young Dalio, and he lost out on going to college right out of high school. 
He eventually enrolled at CW Post College, a campus of Long Island University in Brooksville, on a probationary basis. While in college, Ray continued to buy and sell stocks and became interested in commodity futures. He saw an avenue for him to earn high profits on minimal investments due to the low margin requirements in the industry. The Beatles, one of the most renowned bands of all time, traveled to India to study meditation, and Ray thought there might be something there for him too. Apart from his business endeavors, Ray was also an avid music fan. Ray began using transcendental meditation regularly and found the practice beneficial to his health. He found out that meditation helped him focus better and think more imaginatively, which helped him in his college education. After disliking the elementary and middle school system throughout his childhood, which affected his high school performance, Ray was finally glad he could finally choose his own course and follow his interests. This helped him perform academically in college and graduate with a better result. After this success and good performance in college, he admitted into the MBA program of Harvard Business School in 1971. Between college and graduate high school, Ray worked as a clerk on the New York Stock Exchange floor in the summer of 1971. Here, he witnessed firsthand the effects of the international financial crisis. He experienced President Nixon's decision to sever the relationship between the dollar and the value of gold. This period marked the end of the post-World War II Bretton Woods Agreement. The exchange rates for some of the world's most popular currencies were fixed, and the price of gold was set at $35 per ounce. What happened in 1971 taught Ray that even though he was ahead of the learning curve, he had to study and understand the importance of commodity prices. Between the two years of the business school at Harvard, Ray Dalio spent his summer trading commodities at Merrill Lynch. He was a hot topic everywhere and he returned to Cambridge due to his trading capabilities at such a young age. With some friends from Harvard, Dalio started a company called Bridgewater Associates. But things didn't go as planned. During this period, the prices of commodities were significantly rising fast. As a result, the stock market plummeted, and soon afterwards, investors rushed into commodities trading. Therefore, the arrival of Ray Dalio on Wall Street was like the Messiah's appearance, because MBA graduates with expertise in commodities trading was very rare. After Harvard Business School, he worked at Dominic & Dominic LLC for a year and then joined Sherson Hayden Stone as a trader. When Ray joined Sherson Hayden Stone, it was headed by Wall Street legend Stanford Weil. According to Dalio, he chafed under Sherson's hierarchical structure. He lost his job after getting drunk and punching his head of department at a New Year's Eve party. Despite this, most of his clients still trusted in his abilities as he left Shearson to work as an independent trader. At age 26 and working out of his two-bedroom apartment in New York City, Ray Dalio decided to start his own firm, which he called Bridgewater Associates, again as a small trading firm. He enjoyed trading independently, and after trading for some time, he decided to settle down and married Barbara Dalio Ne Gabaldini. When Bridgewater started, Ray advised a few corporate clients on currency exchange and interest rate risks. As time went on, these clients enjoyed and benefited from Bridgewater's advice and began to be sought after by bigger corporations. After McDonald's and one of its major suppliers joined Bridgewater's portfolio, the company began to grow exponentially. Later, Ray and Barbara moved from New York to Connecticut to begin their family. In 1985, the World Bank's Employee Retirement Fund joined the list of portfolio companies for Bridgewater. Four years later, in 1989, Bridgewater signed Kodak's Retirement Fund system as a client. As the client list for Bridgewater was growing, the scope of investments was also growing. Ray employed an investment approach called Global Macro, which involved investing on a large scale worldwide. He carefully studied the market history and found previous examples of occurrences that his competitors believed were unprecedented. He built the foundation of his company on the anticipation of changes in currency exchange rates, commodity prices, inflation, and GDP growth in the world's economies. The company began gaining prominence as a currency advisor to institutional clients and a developer of techniques for overlaying currencies. 
He then decided to open a hedge fund called Pure Alpha in 1991. The inspiration behind the name comes from the differential between the overall average returns on a given market, labeled as beta, and those that exceed the market return, termed alpha. Bridgewater was a pioneer in companies that identified a base strategy between beta and alpha classes. Pure Alpha has grown and earns about 18% annual yields. Remember the meditation I talked about earlier? Dalio applied this knowledge to understand the psychological factors influencing market decisions and company management. He found that the greatest obstacle to rational decision making was the ego barrier. The ego barrier is the desire to prove oneself right and others wrong, even in the face of evidence to the contrary. Dalio applied the principle of radical transparency in his management of Bridgewater. Under this principle, criticism of colleagues and analysis of their mistakes were allowed and encouraged if they came from a good place and could contribute to the individual's learning process. Gossiping and keeping secrets was totally prohibited, and was not only for the employees, but also for the clients. Every meeting is videotaped, and copies are made available to everyone, no matter the department in which one works. In 2005, Ray Dalio outlined his business management philosophy in a 100-plus page essay, The Principles. The transparency spans across investors as well. Clients receive daily newsletters, monthly performance reviews, quarterly reviews, and frequent conference call briefings. Analysts at Bridgewater in 2006 calculated that the total debt service in the United States exceeded income and that the economy was headed towards a major deleveraging. As a precautionary measure, Dalio invested major amounts in the United States Treasury bonds, gold, and the Japanese yen. He also saw that the boom in home mortgage finance in the United States would end in 2007. He, therefore, met the Secretary of the Treasury in Washington to warn him that the large banks involved in the mortgage-backed securities were in danger of insolvency. Bridgewater later pulled out of several large banks in the spring of 2008, including Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. A week later, Bear Stearns failed, and panic crippled the international financial market. The crisis that arose affected several fund investment funds. While other investment funds were posting massive losses, Pure Alpha Fund posted gains of 9.5%. The following year, Ray shared his understanding of the deleveraging process in an essay called A Template for Understanding What's Going On. 2010 was another big year for Pure Alpha Fund as they rose by 45%, which amounted to $15 billion. This was more than the combined profit of some big companies like Google, Amazon, Yahoo, and eBay. In 2010, Ray Dalio sold 20% of the company to employees of Bridgewater. All suggestions by people to take the company public have been declined by Ray as he thinks this would dilute the company's essential identity. His common strategy is to perform very well in any market condition. Following the crisis, new funds such as All Weather and Pure Alpha Major Markets were founded by Bridgewater in 2011. All Weather Fund charges low fees and seeks to match market return. Pure Alpha Major Markets charge a 2% fee and a 20% of any return over the market. This is the annual fee for hedge funds. The strategy for Pure Alpha Major Markets is like the original Pure Alpha, but with an increased focus on the European bond market. While other hedge funds were losing 4% or more in 2011, Bridgewater reported returns of about 23%. That year, Ray was estimated to have earned about $3.9 billion, which elevated his net worth to $11 billion. In July 2011, Ray Dalio officially took off his title as the chief executive officer for Bridgewater and assumed the title of a mentor. In 2012, Ray Dalio appeared on the annual Time 100 list of the 100 most influential people in the world. In 2011 and 2012, Bloomberg listed him as one of the 50 most influential people. Dalio served as the co-CEO of Bridgewater for 10 months before announcing in March 2017 that he would step down as part of the company-wide shakeup. John Rubenstein, co-CEO of Bridgewater, was also announced to step down with Dalio but would retain an advisory role. About the personality that led him to investment success, 
Dalio said he considered himself a hyper-realist and is motivated to understand the mechanisms that dictate how the world functions without adding abstract value judgment. When it comes to application, Dalio translates his market insights into algorithms. His strategy focuses on currency and fixed income markets. He popularized the risk parity approach, which he uses for risk management and diversification within Bridgewater Associates. The exact investment portfolios for Dalio are kept secret from the public. Only a dozen people within Bridgewater and its associate firms understand how it trades at any given time. Dalio has made it known that capitalism is generally the best economic system, but he has argued that it needs to be reformed. He said on 60 Minutes that income inequality in the United States was a national emergency that requires reform. In May 2020, he stressed the need for reform in capitalism, saying, As the current crisis unfolds, we should remember that throughout history, capitalism has proven to be the best system, though it can sometimes be highly flawed. He offers several proposals for changes in public investment, taxation, and monetary policy. Later that year, in October, Dalio cautioned people not to be blind to China's rise, arguing that it had continued to emerge as a superpower globally. He added that China has succeeded in several ways, including high economic performance despite the COVID-19 pandemic. He further stated that China was the center of half of all listed initial public offerings worldwide. According to him, China has come a long way and in a few years, it will overtake the United States in terms of technological advancements. Dalio downplays and denies Chinese human rights violations, instead likening the Chinese government to a strict parent. These views have garnered several criticisms from people all around the world. In August 2022, Bridgewater wiped its portfolio clean of almost all Chinese stocks. These include Alibaba, Billy Belly, NetEase, JD.com, and DD Global. The move is notable given Dalio has been an increasingly outspoken champion of Beijing and its one-party leadership ever since he first visited the country in 1984, even sending his son Matt to live in the country for a year a decade later. Ray Dalio's work has marked him for many industry recognitions and awards. Dahlia received the Golden Plate Award of the American Academy of Achievement, presented by Carlisle Group co-founder David Rubenstein, during the International Achievement Summit in Washington, D.C. In 2017, CNBC listed principles amongst the 13 best business books of the year, and a CIO magazine and Wired magazine called Ray Dalio the Steve Jobs of investing. Ray has used his considerable resources outside hedge fund investments to fund ocean exploration. Since 2011, he's owned the research ship Elucia, which was used in 2017 to record the first footage of a live giant squid. He also bought a drill ship and converted it into a giant research vessel, a floating laboratory, and a television studio. This is bringing the wonders of the deep ocean to classrooms and living rooms worldwide. This 286-foot ocean explorer can carry a crew of 85 and has a hangar space for multiple deep-sea vehicles. The Voyage of the Ocean Explorer is featured in a six-part television series by Dalio's Ocean X Media and BBC Television produced for National Geographic. Ray Dalio has a foundation that he wants to focus on helping people in need and also charity. He has promised to donate huge amounts of his wealth to charity. The Dalio's family's diverse philanthropic passions include equal opportunity in education, financial inclusion, microfinance, ocean exploration and conservation, mental health and wellness, digital equity, the next generation of video games for learning, community and the arts, and more. The life of Ray Dalio is an inspiration for young investors who seek to become great investors. From humble beginnings, Ray rose from the suburbs of Queens and Long Island to become a billionaire and the greatest hedge fund manager in the world. Ray defied all odds by preventing being stopped in any situation and always wanting to learn and be on top. His life is a real example of making lemonade when life throws lemons at you. I don't know what will inspire you if this story doesn't inspire you to be great. Remember to like and share this video.
This will help YouTube recommend this video to more people and improve our search rankings.